Hello everybody. So in this video, let's talk about another important aspects of uh, implementing event-driven architectures with AWS serverless services. To explain that, I'm going to use this particular diagram where we have a set of users uh, who are requesting to generate some QR codes. Now these requests are, let's imagine, a HTTP POST request. They'll be received by an API gateway. And then we have an Lambda attached to the API gateway. So uh, these Lambda functions will be invoked by these HTTP requests. So after that, this particular Lambda function will put an event to an event bridge. And then we'll have an uh, event bridge rule set up uh, for this particular event bridge uh, event bus, where this request will be sent to an SQS queue. And here in the SQS queue, we will have another Lambda worker that will fetch this request batch by batch and then process these batch requests and create those QR images and store it in a S3 bucket. So in this use case, the main purpose of this particular Lambda function which is attached to the API gateway is to put events into the event bridge. So it's essentially doing this transporting data from API gateway to event bridge. Now here, if you are not doing any meaningful processing, but the sole purpose of the Lambda function is to transport the data from API gateway to event bridge, then probably we should not use this Lambda function at all. Instead, we can use API gateway service integration to directly add these messages to event bridge. So with the service integration from API gateway, we can directly send messages to event bridge and also there are many other AWS services uh, where this service integration is supported at API Gateway. So we can get rid of this Lambda function. And by doing that, we are essentially reducing the latency for this whole process. Because in event-driven architectures, every time we add another component in between, it's going to add some latency. So here, API Gateway has its latency, Lambda has its latency, API, uh, Event Bridge, and SQS queue. So when we get rid of this Lambda function, it is one less hop. And in fact, Lambda functions are also prone to call starts. The service integration do not include any call starts really. And not only that, but also the cost will be reduced because uh, every time the Lambda function is executed, you have to pay for the execution cost. So here that cost will be reduced too. And also you and me both know AWS Lambda has this concurrency limit. By default, it is uh, 1000 Lambda functions uh, executions in parallel. So if you exceed that 1000 Lambda invocation because of too many requests from your users, then the other request will be throttled and failed. So by removing this Lambda function, you are going to reduce these request throttlings as well. Because of these benefits, let's use service integration here. So I'll remove these lambda functions altogether and now we will be directly adding these messages to event bridge now we have been using serverless framework so how can we implement this service integration with serverless framework now fortunately there's this plugin called serverless api gateway service proxy now this plugin supports API Gateway service integration with multiple services. So it supports Kinesis, SQS Queue, S3, SNS, DynamoDB, and also for Event Bridge. So this is what we are going to use. So if you want to easily implement using serverless framework, you should think about using this particular plugin. Now if you select this uh, Event Bridge, it will take you to the section and here, what we essentially have to do is install that plugin and in the custom section of our serverless.yaml file, we have to specify the API Gateway Proc service as event bridge and include these attributes. For example, here we have to include the path, the method, and the source, detail type, event bus name. So with this configuration, you can easily send messages to event bus directly from API Gateway. 
Now, if you want to add some authorization before sending these uh, messages to event bus, you can do that too using this plugin. Uh, can you see it also supports authorization? So you can see more information in add authorization section. So essentially you have to specify the authorization type that you want to use, whether it's AWS IAM, custom or cognitive user pool. So then your request will be authorized before sending to the uh, target services. All right. So in the next video, let's implement this architecture.